Hello everyone and welcome to your Chem 113 review on electron configurations in the D and F orbitals. My name is Jason and I work for the ASU Tutoring Center. So here we're being asked to write the condensed electron configuration of the following elements. So remember condensed electron configuration means you start at the previous noble gas and then you write out the remainder of the electron configuration. So for our first one, titanium Ti, it's here. Uh, so we would start it by uh, writing out argon, the noble gas that comes before it. So it would be AR. And then we'd start working our way through as we did previously, right? Uh, so we are in the fourth row. So when we move our way through the S orbital here, that would be a 4S2. But then, okay, so this is why the D block and F block are weird. So when you go into the D block, the, for, the, for the D block, the principal number, n, is one less than the row number. So although we're in the fourth row, the principal number for this d block is not 4d, it's actually 3d. I know, very strange. Um, so instead of writing 4d2 for this, we would actually write 3d2. And in fact, because this principal number three is smaller than this principal number four, we would actually have to write it in the other way. We would not write 4s2, 3d2, we would write the 3d2 first, and then the 4s2. This comes from the fact that you have to fill up the energy levels in increasing order. So um, we would want to fill up the 3d orbital, or, or at least not fill it up necessarily, but get electrons into the 3d orbital before we start getting electrons into the 4s orbital. Okay. okay, so that's what we would do for the first one. So, so just be aware of this weird fact about the, uh, about the D block. Uh, it's always one less than the row number. Okay, so now let's move on to number two, copper. Copper, that's Cu, that's over here. So uh, using the rules from above, copper should be, it, it's in the same row, so it's, so it's argon it would be 3d9, 4s2, correct? Well, not exactly. Uh, this is one of the many exceptions that exist within chemistry. Uh, it's just kind of the nature of it. If we look at the 3d subshell, it looks like this. And if we fill in nine electrons, again, we have to fill them across first by Hund's rule, and then we can start doubling them up. It looks like this, and I'll even draw the 4s um, subshell as well. It looks like this. It's so close to being full, but it's not quite there, right? If we, if we had one more electron, the 3d block would be, would be full, it would be complete, everyone would be happy. And in fact, having a, a full, a complete 3d block is more stable than having a complete 4s block. So the electron is more stable with a full, um, I guess I would say like a D block than a full S block. Okay. So what the electron is actually going to do is it's going to steal one of these electrons and bring it over there. So instead of having 4s2 and a 3d9, it'll actually have 4s1 and a 3d10. Because that is a more stable configuration for your electron. Okay? I know, it's weird. But just, just be aware of that one weird rule. When you're, when you're one electron away in your d block, your, your atom is going to steal an electron from the 4s orbital to put it in the 3d orbital because it's more stable there. And atoms always love being in their most stable configuration. Okay? So just, again, just be aware. Okay. So those are two weird cases. Now we have Tb. Uh, if we look for that, it's down here in our lanthanides. Uh, and we're going to write out what this is. So... The thing about D block is that the, the principal quantum number is always one less than the row number. But the thing about the F block is that the principal quantum number is always two less 
than the row number. So following uh, similar rules, um, we look at, again, imagine these lanthanides exist right here. So we would look at the noble gas that comes before it, which is xenon. Okay. Um, and then we would write, you know, 6s2, but in reality, the f block would have to come first. So we would have the 6s2 here. And then we'd start filling in our f block. Um, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So it is 9f, sorry. It is f9. And what principal number do we use here? It's always two less than the row number. So although we are in row six, we would write a four up front. Okay, we're filling in the fourth. All right, perfect. So, so that's how you would do the um, configurations for elements that exist within the D and F blocks. You just have to remember to take one less for the row number for D block, two less for F block, and then in, in, in weird random cases, particularly in this column, um, just be aware you may have to steal electrons away to have a more stable D block over a more stable S block. All right, well, thank you all for watching. Uh, as I mentioned, I work for the tutoring services here on campus. So if you want more information about the free tutoring resources available on all four major ASU campuses and online, please check out tutoring.asu.edu slash content slash tutor dash search. By going here, you will be able to search for a tutor on your campus or online that can help with your specific course. So definitely go check that out. Um, thank you again and have a wonderful day.